Well, welcome everyone to the EKG case for the week of August 6th, 2012. You know, over the past couple of weeks, we've had some relatively longer cases. This week, we've got a short and sweet one. And this case was sent to us by Mike Sheriff. Mike is a paramedic with the Mecklenburg EMS Agency in Charlotte, North Carolina. And dare I say, Mike is actually a bit of an EKG nerd, which I love to say. Uh, and he has sent me some very nice emails and some nice cases over the past uh, one or two years or so. And this was a great case that he sent me not too long ago that he thought would be really great. It's a short and quick case. Mike got called to the, I guess, the residence of a 48-year-old guy who had presented with chest pain or was complaining of chest pain. He had a syncopal episode, but upon arrival, I think he was awake, but he was still persistently complaining of chest pain. So Mike and his crew got a quick 12 lead EKG and the EKG machine is reading this as completely normal. It's normal sinus rhythm. Uh, there's not a whole lot to really to worry about, right? Well, Mike took a look at this and Mike was actually worried about something. He was worried about something in a lead that we don't normally pay much attention to. It was actually lead AVL. Now, what is it in lead AVL that had Mike worried? Well, if you take a close look at lead AVL, remember normally the ST segment should be fairly isoelectric and flat. If you look carefully, the ST segment is a little bit depressed and it's actually just a little down. And now I'm going to ex exaggerate this just to show you what I'm talking about. It's not quite that downsloping, but you'll notice that that ST segment does downslope just a little bit. Now, who cares about ST segment downsloping? It almost looks like it's downsloping into a flipped T wave. There is an upright T wave there, but that downsloping and almost biphasic appearance to that T wave is a bit concerning. Now, when you look over in the inferior leads also, whenever you look at AVL, always take another look also at the inferior leads, you might notice that there's just a tad, tad bit, and I'm seriously saying tad bit, of ST segment elevation in those inferior leads, probably not even a half millimeter of ST segment elevation. So who in the world is going to pay attention to a half millimeter of ST segment elevation? Your EKG machine is not going to pay attention to half millimeter. Most EKG machines are programmed so that they will only pick up ischemia or infarction when the ST elevation or depression is at least one full millimeter. So you can be having an acute coronary syndrome with ST elevation or depression of a half millimeter or 0.9 millimeters and your EKG machine at most is going to call it non-specific, or in this case, it'll just plain call it normal. But Mike knew enough to not follow the EKG machine interpretation. He was concerned about lead AVL as a possible early marker of inferior wall ischemia. And by the way, how did he know about that? Well, we've talked about this before on this EKG weekly podcast or video cast. Uh, if you go back through the files, look at October 30th, 2011. The EKG case of the week from October 30th, 2011 was a full discussion all about lead AVL and how mild abnormalities in lead AVL can predict impending inferior wall STEMIs. Now, let me just give you a minute of background on that. For decades, for decades, literally, some of the EKG gurus like Henry Marriott and Edward Chung and some of the other big name cardiologists out there have talked about lead AVL and how ST segment downsloping or T wave inversions in AVL can sometimes be the earliest marker of an impending inferior wall MI. Now recall that when patients have inferior wall STEMIs, the most common lead in which you see reciprocal changes is lead AVL. So essentially, what these EKG gurus have taught us is that sometimes when a person is having a STEMI, the first EKG abnormality that occurs is not the ST elevation. The first EKG abnormality occurs in that, that occurs in a STEMI sometimes is the reciprocal change. Sometimes reciprocal changes occur first, then the STs start to rise. And that's exactly what happens oftentimes in inferior wall mm -hmm. STEMIs. In inferior wall STEMIs, what oftentimes will happen is that you get reciprocal changes in lead AVL, and then a short time later, then the ST segments 
from the inferior leads, then they start to rise 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes later. So that's what Mike was thinking about. Is this an early inferior wall MI? So what do you do? How do you know? You know what? You do something very simple, very quick, very cheap. You simply repeat the 12 lead EKG and see if anything's evolving. So that's what he did. Nine minutes later, that's how quick Mike was working. Nine minutes later, he repeated that 12 lead EKG. And what do you know? AVL is looking worse. Now, if you look at the inferior leads, there's still no more ST segment elevation than there was in the first EKG, but there is a significant change. What you'll notice is the morphology of the T waves is starting to become very, very straight. Remember, a normal T wave morphology, much like V3, normally T waves should be concave upwards. Take a look at V2 and V3. Those are nice and normal, okay? Normal T waves should go concave upwards. These T waves in the inferior leads have become very straight. We've talked about that on the EKG series, weekly series as well. When T waves start looking very straight, it's oftentimes an early marker of ischemia. So combining that AVL abnormality, the reciprocal changes in AVL plus the straightening on the initial part of those T waves, Mike was right here able to diagnose an inferior wall STEMI or confirm an inferior wall STEMI. And the EKG machine, by the way, still is not calling the STEMI. So he diverted the patient to a cath center instead of a non-cath center. And then when they got there, they repeat another 12 lead EKG. Now it's 744 AM and now you've clearly got the inferior STEMI. You're starting to get some cues out there and AVL has progressed a little bit more. The EKG machine finally called this EKG a true inferior wall STEMI, but Mike knew what was happening half an hour earlier because he knew and paid attention to lead AVL. So very, very simple take-home point. And um, the two take-home points that I'll give you, number one, when you're seeing some abnormalities in lead AVL, ST segment downsloping or a flip T wave in AVL, in a patient actively having chest pain, you've got to worry that that might be the first marker of an impending inferior wall STEMI. And if you want more information about that, go to October 30th, 2011, EKG case of the week. Just scroll backwards and you'll find it. You get a full discussion about that. The second take home point is a more gen generic point. Whenever you see some type of abnormalities on the 12 lead EKG, even subtle abnormalities in a person who's actively having chest pain, get serial EKGs. Even though that first EKG may be not diagnostic, your serial EKGs over the next 10, 20, 30 minutes or so can become diagnostic and you just might save a life just the way Mike Sheriff did. Or even if he didn't save this patient's life, he certainly saved a lot of time in making the diagnosis because had he not picked up the abnormality and gotten serial EKGs, this patient might very well have ended up at a non-cath lab facility, and then you've got all that extra time of trying to transfer the patient, or you might have to use a less ideal treatment, thrombolytics. So kudos to Mike Sheriff for making this subtle pickup and for getting the serial EKGs. You really did this patient a huge favor. And again, thanks to Mike Sheriff for sending me this great case to share with everyone out there. I hope this case was helpful to you all, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye for now.